Okay, everybody, this is Moody Dashcam. If you enjoy these videos, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. I also have an Instagram, check that out. It's at Moody Dashcam. I post content on there daily. All right, so right now we are in Dix Hills, but we're gonna be heading into Brentwood. And the reason for that is because of a man named Joseph Caridi, also known as Joe C. By the end of his mafia career, he was a Lucchese consigliere which is pretty high up, it's above captain. And the reason why we're heading into Brentwood is because he was nicknamed by the media the Tony Soprano of Long Island. Now the reason for that is because he owned and operated out of, didn't really own, we'll get into that, um, a place called Cinderella's. It was a strip club slash uh, adult video store. So that's the spot that we're going to right now. The address to that is 920 Crooked Hill Road in Brentwood. Now one of his right hand men was John Sorella. It was like his kind of like his partner. He was involved in everything with him. And he got his start in the Lucchese crime family in like 1980 under the boss at the time Vittorio Omuso. A muso probably and I'm gonna tell you one of his rackets that he had going on which was kind of crazy so there was a guy who came to his crew a business owner that came to his crew he was the owner of Hudson McCoy fish house and bar at 340 Woodcliffe Avenue which is the nautical mile in Freeport if you're familiar so it's a whole strip on the water of bars and restaurants and clubs and stuff so he owns that, and his partner is Louis Kasman, right? Now, he's a Gambino associate. So the owner contacts Caridi's crew and says, Listen, I believe my partner, Louis, is stealing money from the business. So can you take care of that? And his crew says, Of course we can take care of that. So they go in, they end up strong arming um, Louis out of the picture. So now it's just the owner. And of course, in typical mafia fashion, they strong on their way into his business. And not only do they make him change his Italian bread supplier to one of their uh, Colombo crime family friends, but they were stealing about $10,000 a night from this guy in his business. So I bet that his old partner, Louis, wasn't even stealing that much. And they come in to supposedly help, and they steal that much more. But, besides the point, the spot that we're going to now is Cinderella's. Apparently, this is what was said, because um, the owner eventually went to the authorities. But his crew went in there. I'm not sure if he was involved in the actual um, taking over of the club. A lot of the times, the higher-ups send their crew guys there. But who knows? Some people like to be involved. So, um... They put a gun to the owner's head and said, your business is owned by the mob now. What do you do in that situation? You, you give over your cut of the profits. Apparently they were making about $5,000 a week from Cinderella's. And another reason why he was called the Tony Soprano of Long Island, I don't know if I mentioned that before, is because he worked out of Cinderella's. That was his... Um, kind of his headquarters and spot that he ran his business out of, which is similar to Tony Soprano, because Tony Soprano had the Bada Bing strip club. And he would, Caridi would have his meetings at his son's football games, similar to Tony Soprano, exactly how he had his meetings. Um, I'll put a picture of Caridi up, of course. He's got the typical mobster look, the slick back black hair, all that stuff. Um, some facts about him. He was born in 1949. And of course, this whole situation comes crashing down. Because it always does. Now, November 13th, 2002, 16 members of the Lucchese crime family were arrested. After 75 detectives and investigators raided 14 homes and businesses. 
that was all stemming from the situation because the Cinderella's owner contacted the authorities. Which, of course, you do in that situation. Nah, maybe you don't. That could get you killed back then. So it'll get you killed now, really. So, the raids went on between Nassau County, Suffolk County, Brooklyn, and Queens. Roughly $70,000 in cash was recovered, along with computers and all business documents and stuff like that. Uh, the age range of guys arrested were from 39 to 77 years old. It was a nine month investigation, which is a very long investigation. Uh, six people were charged with enterprise corruption, which is similar to, um, it's like the state level equivalent of uh, a federal racketeering charge. And the rest were charged with loan sharking and gambling. Now, this was the biggest organized crime crackdown in 20 years on Long Island at the time. I'm sure it probably still is. Be over there shortly. setting of a crazy amount of mob activity. Now Joe himself um, lived in East Northport about a 10-15 minute drive from here. So this right here was the spot. Now it's Saturday night right now so I believe there's probably people in here. I mean, it is only, it's early still. Let's get a good shot of the sign. Cinderella's. Right there. Cinderella's Adult Center. Lingerie boutique novelties for today's sophisticated adults 18 years of age or older. It's kind of wild that this was just the place. I'll do a nice U-turn. We'll get all the neon signs and stuff like that. I'm sure this dude right here in the white truck is looking at me like I'm crazy. Just turn around. Don't worry about me. Don't mind me. Wow, that's old school. 64 channel video preview booths. That is some um, seedy stuff right there. It looks like it hasn't been changed since the, the late 90s, early 2000s. Like this is probably exactly what it looked like when he ran his operations out here. Crazy to think. All right, that's pretty much everything I have to tell you about Joseph Caridi. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you in the next one.